Hi everyone, hope you're all well. Welcome back to our series of building a website using the Hostinger AI. In this series, we are covering step-by-step -step exactly how to create a website using the new Hostinger AI editor with help from the Zyro Builder as well. Uh, in our previous videos, we set up our template and in today's video, we are gonna start getting into building the header using the Zyro uh, drag and drop editor as well. Um, so if you haven't watched those videos, I recommend you watch those first and come back here. But before we dive in, make sure to hit that subscribe button and ring the notification bell so you never miss out on our web development tips and tutorials. So let's get started. So the header of the website is the top section of the page and it's typically visible on all pages of the website. It usually contains elements like the website's logo or name, the main navigation menu and other important links like a contact page or search bar. It can also include some social media icons as well. The purpose of the header is to identify the website. The header is the first thing that the visitors will see and it's the thing that they'll see on every single page on your website. So it's important to make sure that it's, it clearly identifies your brand. And it's the best place to put your website's main navigation. It makes it easier for web visitors to find the pages that they're looking for. And it also provides access to important information um, like the contact page or search bar as well. In addition to these functional purposes, the header can also be used to create a visual impact and invoke emotions in visitors. So for example, you can use bright colors and bold fonts to create a sense of excitement and energy, or you can use soft colors and elegant fonts to create a sense of luxury and sophistication. But overall, it's the important part of a website and it can be used to identify the website, provide navigation and create a visual impact. So let's get started with Syro and how you can help us build a header. So here is our blank template and here is this header section of our website. It's at the top and on the top left it says header um, and it's edited in a really specific way. So if we click on that section, you can see that the little toolbar on the right shows up showing some options for header um, and navigation and some style options. So if we click into edit styles, these are the style settings for our header. Um, it's same if you click on edit, uh, edit header, you get the header settings as well, um, but it takes you to the layout options. So they're both the same sections, they just take you to the same button. Um, so if we go into the layout, we have, op we have these options here. For layout, we can choose if we want to make the header sticky or not. There are a few benefits to making the header sticky, including improved user experience. So a sticky header will allow for A sticky header will allow for uh, the users to always see where your website is and your navigation is without having to scroll back up um, for to look to go to a new website. Um, this can be especially helpful for websites with long pages or content. Um, a sticky header can also help increase conversions because it makes it really easy for users to find and go on to different pages um, and take the desired action. Um, it can also help improve um, brand awareness because your logo is always going to be uh, in view of your um, clients and your customers as well, so it's prominently visible. Um, but it also means that you have a reduced screen space because um, it does take up some space on your screen. So if you if it is a, it's more of a downside for smaller devices. Um, a sticky header can be distracting if it's too large or too cluttered, and it might be not be accessible to all users, especially if those with visual impairments. Um, but overall, the benefits of making your header sticky kind of outweigh the drawbacks. Um, it's important to implement a sticky header in a way that minimizes the drawbacks and maximizes the benefits. So for now, we will keep our header sticky. And we also have the option of the menu position. So this is referring to this navigation menu here and you can decide if you want to keep it in line in the middle, left or right. And you can also take a look at the menu item spacing. So essentially control the spacing, the gap between each item and also the top and bottom spacing as well. So we're going to keep that a little bit small. What might be good actually before adding in, uh, before making the header settings is to add all of the pages. So that way you know exactly how much space and navigation is going to take. So we have an about page, a gallery page, a contact page. Um, if there's any other pages that you might want to add, you can add that here. Um, and then you would just click on add page and you will just click on, so for example, if it's a services page you want to add, you would just click on services or you can add a completely empty page. Um, and then you just want to give it a name. Um, so for example, we'll call it FAQs. 
and you want to do the page URL, it should automatically take that from the name in the navigation, but you'll see a preview of the URL here. Um, and you can decide if you want to give it a, uh, if you want to hide this as well. Um, what that means is that page won't be shown in the main navigation, but it will still be in the on your site and accessible. This is useful for pages like terms and condition and privacy policy, where those pages are usually found in the footer, not the header. Um, but we'll keep that on the nav bar. You can also add a social image. So social images will display on social networks or in text messages when the URL is shared. So it's really good to add an image here. And you just want to click on image, upload file. And it might just be the logo um, of your website as well. And just click on upload files uh, or just select that. And that's it. Um, a password will allow limit access to that page, um, but then and then you can decide a customized page as well. So you can do like membership pages if you wanted to, and then just click save, and then you've got the uh, page set up as well. So we've got the pages set up, and we'll go back to editing our header. I'm happy with the item spacing. So next is the logo. So we're gonna click on replace image, and we are just gonna replace it with one of our logos here. And you can decide on the logo width. Um, and item spacing as well. What we're going to do is we're going to change the background of the header. So right now it's a transparent header. We're going to uh, remove that and instead pick a different color for our header. what some of the setting settings do and just do it as well. The text color, I'm going to change to white. And that's it. And that's it. So Zari make it keep it really simple with their header, um, especially with their um, blank sections as well and their blank templates as well. Um, so it's really easy to kind of customize and add on all your pages. You can also make uh, changes using the hover styles as well. Um, so you can make changes to colors um, in different hover states as well. So it's up to you. One thing that's really good to add is the social icons. So if you click on style and click on social icons, you can add your own social icons on the top. And it just helps increase um, awareness of your social icons and interactivity as well. Um, so once you have the social icons set up, um, what you want to do is just also change the styling if you wanted to. So right now the icon colors are white. We are going to change that or black, and we're going to change that back to white. And on the hover cover is can stay black, which is fine. Um, and then all you need to do is click on the settings for each of them, and then just make sure that you are linking to your own um, social media. Right now these are default uh, social media links, so you want to make sure that you're um, linking to your own. Um, and that's simple enough to do, just get the link of your own social media, so for example your Facebook, and then just edit that and paste it in. And if there is a icon that you don't need, so for example if you don't need the X logo or the Instagram, you just click on settings and just click on delete um, as well. And you can also just add a new link. Um, you don't need to worry so much about uh, the icon because once you paste in the link, um, you can it automatically adds the logo for you. And that's it. So you can see it all get added and we have a simple uh, header. Um, and with different styling as well. So you can really see how that works and just uh, keeping it really simple um, as well. So here are some best practices when it comes to implementing a header. Um, what you want to do is, the first one is to keep it simple and uncluttered. 
As mentioned before, the header is the first thing visitors will see, um, so it's important that it's really clear and easy to understand. Avoid using too many elements or too much text. You want to use a consistent design throughout your website. The header should be designed in a way that is consistent with the overall design of your website, and this will help create a unified look and feel as well. Uh, make sure that the header is responsive. The header should look good and function properly on all devices, including desktop, uh, laptops, tablets, and smartphones. And use icons to make it more sort of visually appealing. Um, for example, using the social media icons or a call to action icon as well. Um, just makes it more fun and uh, easier to understand as well. Can, it can also save space because instead of using full words, you're using uh, smaller images instead. So you can create a header that's both effective and visually appealing using the Zyra Builder as well, and they make it really easy. So that's a wrap on our video on how to create a header. The next video will look at uh, creating a footer. Um, we'll look at best practices and actually build a footer with the Zyro editor as well. So hit the notification bell to stay updated on that. And any questions or comments, leave them in the section below. And uh, we'd love to hear from you as well. I hope you enjoyed this video and I'll see you in the next one.